there. Uh, welcome back to Fishing and Adventure Tales by Alec. Today, I'm going to be talking about some extreme fishing differences between Alaska and the Amazon in Brazil. I was fortunate to have fished in both places in the last uh, year. Last year, I spent three weeks fishing all over Alaska, mostly solo, uh, extreme fishing, and I just got back from a two-week amazing Amazon fishing adventure deep, deep in the jungle. So we're going to break this down and go through and what is more extreme, fishing in the remote Alaskan outback or fishing in the deep Amazon jungle. So let's break this down. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell or whatever that is, so you don't miss out on any of my amazing, thrilling content. Um, <clears throat> thanks to my subscribers already. Like I said last year, I spent three weeks solo fishing in Alaska from uh, all the ways down south in Homer all the ways to about 150, 170 miles north of the Arctic Circle. Really covered a lot of ground. So, um, first let's cast our lines into the wild rivers and icy waters of Alaska. Uh, Alaska is known for its rugged Alaska is known for its rugged wilderness, mountains, tundra, wildlife, uh, particularly the bears, grizzly, uh, black, and brown. And it's not just the cold weather. Even though I was there in early summer, temperatures still drop down to near freezing in many places at night. So you have to be cognizant of weather, wildlife, and the extreme nature of the unforgiving Alaskan outback. Okay, so um, things really to consider in Alaska, particularly if you're fishing in the Arctic, is it is extremely remote. You are many hours off from a road. You are certainly, maybe if you're lucky, a half day getting to a town where there's a hospital. So this is extremely remote. The waters run fast, the waters run cold and you have to be vigilant all the time for uh, bear. In the summer in Alaska is uh, 24 hours of sunlight, which makes great fishing any time, day or night, but there's also mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are dense, unbelievably thick throughout Alaska. And no matter what anybody says, none of the sprays work. So you just have to deal with it. Uh, the other issue with the 24 hour of sunlight is sleep deprivation. It's hard to go to sleep. I wore blackout uh, things, but you still going to sleep really late and waking up really early and uh, physical exhaustion becomes a risk uh, on an extended trip in Alaska. And we're not talking about cruises. We're talking about real extreme fishing in really remote back country that you either have to fly into or four-wheel drive off-road into. <clears throat> Fishing in the uh, offshore oceans of Alaska is not for the faint of heart. Uh, the Gulf of Alaska, the Bering Sea, notorious uh, for freak weather, high waves, um, and danger very dangerous fishing conditions. You have a lot of real, real uh, issues on extreme fishing offshore Alaska. However, you can't beat it for halibut and, and salmon fishing is unfreaking believable and definitely worth the risk. Bears, oh my God, oh my God. Bears, bears are a real concern. Um, fortunately, uh, Alaska is a, is a carry state, so you can, you can certainly carry a gun. A lot of people do carry a handgun in a chest holster. Um, I did not bring a firearm with me. Um, the guides I were fishing with were all armed. I always had bear spray and a whistle uh, with me. Walking through uh, the woods or whatnot, I would make sure of making noise and, and blow into the little whistle, having the uh, bear spray in a canister on a chest holster so it was really easy to, to get at. Um, Folks in Alaska have two thoughts on bear spray. They're either effective, uh, it's a constant eight second spray of super hot pepper, um, or you're just pre-seasoning the bear's meal, which would be you with, with pepper. Um, 
fortunately, I didn't have any uh, close encounters with any bears. I did see bears on various rivers, kept my distance, made my noise, and everybody went about their business as, as normal, as usual. So those are some of the extreme things to face in Alaska. Now, let's uh, head 10,000 kilometers south to the Amazon jungle where I just came back from uh, just a few weeks ago. In fact, and I just came back from, and I'm still dealing with a little bit of the post-trip issues um, that I encountered, which we'll, we'll get into here. The Amazon is a completely different beast than, than Alaska, obviously. Uh, it, the weather is, is a big difference. It's, it's very hot. I live in South Florida. I am used to heat and used to humidity. The heat and humidity in the Amazon is intense. Uh, it definitely is like way more than what I'm expect what I am used to fishing in the Everglades or even in, in the summertime in South Florida. Uh, you have the dense vegetation, not to mention other dangerous wildlife such as piranhas, anacondas, vampire bats, uh, spiders, and mosquitoes that carry malaria, as well as ants that um, have poison bites, which I suffered quite a bit of ant bites on my uh, ankles. And with the vampire bat, the first night at our lodge on the Gariba River, uh, there was a vampire bat laying on my pillow. So we were able to get him out uh, and he did not come back the rest of the uh, time we were at the lodge. Uh, the next night we had an uninvited visitor in the dining hall and that was a tarantula spider that lives underneath the building. He just came up and kind of did his thing uh, walking across. Um, so you have these, these issues in the Amazon. Mosquitoes are a constant. Um, I had, uh, I, in order to prepare for this trip, I did a yellow fever shot. I had a hepatitis A shot, as well as taking anti-malarial pills. The anti-malarial pills, the anti-malarial pills have uh, several side effects, such as very vivid, disturbing dreams, uh, diarrhea, as well as uh, mental confusion. I did suffer all three of those uh, towards the end of the trip and even post-trip coming home because you have to continue taking the anti-malarial medication. About, let's talk about some of the wildlife in the Amazon. It's not as scary as it sounds, the piranhas and the anacondas and the jaguars. First off, uh, most of the wildlife uh, in the Amazon lives high up in the canopy of the trees, okay? Uh, obviously on the forest floor are going to be your bugs, spiders, ants, um, even some snakes, although most of the snakes are uh, in the canopy. Um, we did not see any anacondas and we did not see any uh, jaguars or leopards. Um, we caught a lot of piranhas. Piranhas were a constant uh, throughout the trip. We swam in the waters where the piranhas were. They were that was not an issue, uh, safety-wise, and we, we also ate piranhas. So we were able to fish for piranhas, eat piranhas, and even bathe and swim in the same waters where we were fishing and catching piranhas without an issue. The issue with the piranhas really come in if you have open bleeding wounds. Uh, then they are attracted and then that can become a, a serious issue. One of the things I experienced in the Amazon that I was not expecting uh, it was the uh, constant wetness of my, my fishing shoes. These are the same uh, fishing shoes I've used in the Everglades, the same fishing shoes I have used uh, in Alaska, waded rivers with them and whatnot. They never dried the whole time I was in the Amazon. So in the evening, I would be wearing uh, sandals or flip-flops or, or, or sliders and in order to not wear wet shoes 24-7. Uh, that's when I, my feet got also really bitten up no matter how much bug spray or DEET you use. And at some point you just say, fuck it, I'm not even gonna bother dealing with the bug spray, it's ineffective anyway, um, and just deal with the, the bug bites which I had antibiotic cream, I had antihistamines, Benadryl. So 
you have to self-treat that way. In the, in the Amazon, it's not just about uh, catching fish, which we caught a lot of fish. It's also about surviving the extreme jungle conditions. So how remote were we at this lodge? Well, I flew into Manaus, which is a city of 2.2 million. It's the capital of the Amazon estate. And I uh, spent a couple of lovely days there sightseeing and enjoying the city and acclimating myself. From Manaus, we caught a two-hour bush plane, flew to the uh, Rio Roosevelt Lodge, which is on the confluence of the very famous Rio Roosevelt and the um, Rio uh, uh, Aprawana. From there, after lunch, we had a four-hour boat ride down to the Guariba Lodge on the Guariba River. So we were extremely remote in, in um, the Amazon. We were, um, I would say the nearest town was about a uh, four or five hour boat ride away. Uh, and that would be also the nearest uh, road. As far as getting to any type of uh, city where there's a hospital or anything, that would be back to Manaus. A four hour boat ride, two hour plane ride. This was way more remote than anything in, in uh, Alaska. Which is more extreme? Well, that really depends on what you're looking for in adventure and your level of, of tolerance of, um, <laughs> of pain, basically. <laughs> really, <laughs> what you're able to, whatever you're able to tolerate. Um, in the Amazon, by the end of the week, my hands were completely cut up, completely scraped, cut up. I took a really nasty fall, uh, hurt my back really bad. My ankles were swollen three to four times the size from all of the bug bites and um, just had to deal with, with that environment. Uh, having said that, I'm, I'm going back in January of 24 to continue fishing in another area of the Amazon. And um, Alaska is just amazingly beautiful, wide open and remote and wild. It does have its challenges from weather to mosquitoes, to grizzlies. So uh, it's really a level of comfort and tolerance of um, discomfort that one is willing to accept um, in those types of, of challenges. Certainly the heat and humidity is a big factor in the Amazon. Uh, the, the, the extreme temperature differentials during the daytime in Alaska, even in late spring, is is, a, is is another uh, concern on the other side. The waters in Alaska were extremely cold. I was wearing my waders. Underneath my waders, I would have uh, long johns, a wool, wool, wool and long underwear, and heavy wool socks. Uh, and sometimes you were still cold uh, in, in the river. So it's real extreme temperature differentials. But if you're into heat and humidity, and a whole lot of unexpected uh, challenges from vampire bats to tarantulas to perhaps seeing an anaconda then the Amazon is calling your name. Remember, no matter what you choose to fish, always respect the environment and where you're going in the wildlife and leave no trace. Take everything with you that you bring in to these extremely remote areas. I have uh, videos on this channel on how to build first aid kits how to use a Garmin device, how to do various survival skills. All of those are prerequisites for going to either one of these extreme fishing adventure locations. Well, that's it for uh, today's extreme adventures. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button, share, comment below with your experiences on something that's extreme uh, or what you would like me to do next in, in the future. Um, and which extreme location you would choose, Alaska or the Amazon. And remember, stay adventurous, but safety first.